Hi, welcome to our channel. Do you have any problem saving money? I hope you don't. But if you do, don't worry. Today, I will share a method that helped myself to save money and achieve my financial goals. But before we dive into it, let me be clear. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing my own experience and knowledge. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with the psychology aspect. I found that one of the major reasons for failure to save is motivation. And the most effective way to solve that problem is by taking responsibility. What do I mean by that? First, you need to set a realistic goal. For example, saving 20% of your annual income is more realistic than saving 70%. An unrealistic goal can destroy your motivation and confidence. Second, you can think of yourself as a company and your parents, partner, and kids are your shareholders. As the CEO of this company, you are responsible for the well-being of your shareholders. So this will push you to take responsibility for every transaction that you take. If you put yourself in the position as a CEO of the company, and your goal is to grow this company by 20% annually, for example, then every dollar you spend requires a return that can help you to achieve your goal. For example, when you want to buy a cup of coffee, you need to think about is this an investment that can boost up your productivity for the rest of your day, or is it just for your personal pleasure? If it's for your own pleasure, then you can skip it. If it's necessary, for your productivity, then the second question is how much you should spend on it. Are you going to spend $3 to get your coffee from Starbucks? Or you can choose to go to a cheaper place and spend $2 to achieve the same purpose, which is to increase your productivity, the caffeine. Another example would be buying a laptop for school or work. You can easily spend $3,000 on a fancy laptop or spend $1,000 for a social laptop, but both laptops can help you with your work. You have to realize that spending the extra money won't help you to get a better result. Some people might argue that happiness can also boost your productivity. So spending the extra money can actually help you to get a better result. I cannot deny that it may be true, but ask yourself, is it going to make a real difference? Or are you looking for excuses to satisfy your desire to spend money? The next important step is to keep track of your cash flow and assets. You should build up a balance sheet and a cash flow statement just like a regular company. A balance sheet can provide an overview of your finance and remind you what you own and what you owe so you know what you need to do to position yourself better financially. As we can see, on the left-hand side, we have assets. On the right-hand side, we have liabilities. Under assets, we have current assets such as cash and long-term assets such as your house and stocks. Note, technically speaking, stocks are categorized as current assets, but I would like to put them as long-term assets because I'm not going to sell them unless I have an emergency. And I also believe investing in stocks for the long term is essential for financial freedom. If you would like to learn more about the benefits of long-term investing in the stock markets, please stay tuned for our future videos. On the liability side, we have current liability such as credit card and line credit and long-term liabilities such as student loan and mortgage. Your total net worth is the difference between your assets and liabilities. Moving on to income and cash flow statement. This is crucial because it shows the amount of money that goes in and out of your pocket, and most importantly, how much you can save. This also can help you measure whether your goal is realistic or not. So on the left hand side, you have all sorts of income, including your salary, bonus, rental income, dividend income, etc. On the right hand side, you have expenses, including food, shelter, transportation, entertainment, and more. Your cash flow is equal to the difference between your income and your expense. 
because there's not much room for you to adjust your income. So expense is the place you can implement your creativity and strategies. For example, can you reduce food bills by cooking more at home? Can you reduce rental expense by looking for a roommate? To summarize, there are two rules that you can follow to start saving money. First, maximize your cash flow by cutting costs. Always think about, is this item going to increase your potential future income? Is there a cheaper alternative? Second, maximize your cash flow by working hard and invest your savings. Always work as hard as possible at your job and invest in things that can provide positive cash flow, such as dividend stock and rental properties. If you would like to know more about how to manage your financial needs with your investment, follow our channel. We'll be making a video about that shortly. To be honest, it's not hard to start saving when you have responsibilities on your shoulder and have a realistic goal. Next, let's talk about the tools that help me to stay on track. First, record your transactions and visit monthly. This will remind you what you have done and where you stand. Second, learn about basic accounting, finance, and economics. This will help you make smarter decisions financially. Third, be friends with people who care about their finances because you can get ideas and motivations from people around you. Last but not least, subscribe to our channel to learn what you need to know in finance. So the last thing that I want to quickly walk you through is the power of PAC and compounding. You can find a lot of details about these two online. Or if you want us to make a detailed video about them, please leave a comment down below. So the basic idea is that first, PAC means pre-authorized contribution. The benefits are it helps reduce risk and improve your consistency of your saving behavior. Second, compounding is a very powerful concept in finance that I think everyone should understand. Compounding makes time your friend, not your enemy. It enables exceptional growth on your assets and helps you stay invested through market cycles. Again, I'm an advocate of long-term investing and timing the market is close to impossible for amateurs. So stay invested is the key to financial success. If you have any questions regarding this topic or have something that you want us to talk about in future videos, please leave a comment down below. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe and smash the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter or visit our website at www.ironhawkresearch.com. We'll be posting weekly market commentary and articles about things that you might want to know in finance. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.